how do you organize your minimal API endpoint? The most common approach I've seen is using an extension method and then organizing your endpoints inside. But in this video, I want to show you an alternative that's going to look very similar to the Reaper pattern. Here is the approach with using extension methods to group your minimal API endpoints. I have a static class called user endpoints and inside of it I have some static methods. The naming convention I like to use is map and then the name of my static class. So in this case I'm mapping the user endpoints and inside of this method I'm configuring my five minimal API endpoints for the user's resource. You also can't forget to call this method from your program file. In this case, I'm calling it from a version draft group builder that also sets up API versioning. And you can see the call to this endpoint here. I have another extension method for my workout endpoints. And you can imagine how this grows as the number of endpoints in my project also increases. So I want to show you an alternative that could be interesting. And I'm going to start by creating a new interface. I'm going to call this the I endpoint. And this interface will have just one method which is going to be a void method called map endpoint. The argument for this endpoint is going to be an I endpoint route builder. And I'm going to use the name of app because that's what I'm already using in the user endpoint static class. So what is the idea here? I'm going to use the I endpoint interface to create a class for each minimal API endpoint. After I have the endpoint classes in place, I can go ahead and scan an assembly containing these classes and then register them as services with dependency injection. And then I can create an extension method that's going to resolve these services and call the map endpoint method, effectively configuring my minimal API endpoints. So let me show you what that would look like. I'm going to create a folder to hold my user's endpoints and let's move the static class inside. I'm going to start taking out the endpoints one by one and let's start with the post endpoint for creating a new user. So I'm going to create a new class and let's call it register and it's going to implement the I endpoint interface. This interface only has one method which is the map endpoint method and I'm just going to copy the code that I already had for configuring this endpoint. Now I can move this into its own file. One additional step is I can simplify this method group here and this is basically it. And then I'm just going to repeat this for the other endpoints that I have. I can get rid of this call here because I already migrated this endpoint. And then the next endpoint is to start following a user in the system. So let's cut this out and I'm going to create another class. The name should be the name of my endpoint. So let's call it start following. I'll implement the I endpoint interface and I can just paste in the code for my minimal API endpoint. Let's move this into its own file and let's go back to my user endpoints class. The next endpoint is the get endpoint to fetch the user by the ID. So let's create a class called get by ID. I can implement my I endpoint interface and add my minimal API code. I'm also going to move this into its own file. And the next endpoint that I have is to get the user's follower stats. So let's go ahead and create a new class. I'm going to call it get follower stats, implement the I endpoint interface and add the minimal API code. I'm also going to move this into its own file. And finally, I have just one endpoint here. I'm going to rename it to get recent followers to match the endpoint that I'm configuring here. And I'm going to implement the I endpoint interface. And I'm just going to take this code and move it into the map endpoint method. Let's get rid of the old code for mapping the user endpoints. And I also need to update the name of the file containing this type. So this completes my migration of the user endpoint. Now I'm registering all of them with the I endpoint interface. And aside from a few updates with generic arguments, there is really nothing that we had to do additionally to update the existing registrations for our minimal API endpoints. If I go back to my program file, you'll see that the map user endpoints method is no longer available. So we have to map our endpoints a different way. So I'm going to get rid of this temporarily and I'm going to add another class that's going to contain an extension method that I'm going to use. I'm going to call this class endpoint extensions. It has to be a static class in order to hold extension methods. And the first extension methods I'm going to add is called add endpoints. This will be an extension method on the iService collection interface. And I'm going to need one more argument representing the assembly 
that I'm going to scan for implementations of the I endpoint interface. This implementation is very straightforward. I just need to iterate over the defined types in this assembly. I'm also going to filter them inside of aware statement and let's look for any types that are going to match this expression. I don't want this to be abstract types, and I also don't want my types to be an interface. Additionally, I want my types to be assignable from the I endpoint interface. So I'm going to say type of I endpoint, and this should filter the correct types. Then I'm going to select this type, and I'm going to project it into a service descriptor. So let's call the service descriptor class, and I'm going to register this using the transient lifetime, and I'm going to specify the I endpoint type as the service type, and this concrete type as the service implementation. And now I'm just going to materialize this into an array, and let's capture this into a variable. So let's call this the endpoint service descriptors. And this is just a shorter way of saying services add transient, and then for example, I specify I endpoint and some implementation. So let's say the implementation is for example, get by ID from the user's endpoints, except it would be cumbersome to do this for all of our endpoints. So I'm just doing it with a simple link expression. So let's get rid of this. And what we have to do here is say services, try add enumerable, and then pass in all of these service descriptors. This is going to register all of our endpoint implementations with dependency injection. Of course, I need to make this a static class for it actually to be an extension method. And then I can just say return services. So this is my add endpoints method, which is going to scan the assembly that I provide and register all the I endpoint implementation with dependency injection. Now, how would I call this? Well, from my program CS file, I can just say builder services add endpoints and I can pass in the assembly and for example, get executing assembly. So this is going to pass in the web API assembly, which contains my endpoints and they're going to be configured with dependency injection. So this is only one part of the story. We also need a way to actually call the map endpoint method on all of the implementations. So for this, we're going to need another extension method and I'm going to create this one on the iApplication builder interface. I'm going to call it map endpoints and for the concrete type, I'm going to specify web application. Inside of this method, I'm going to use the web application to access the service provider and then I can say get required service and I'm going to specify I enumerable of I endpoint as the service that I'm looking for. So actually this is going to resolve all the services implementing the I endpoint interface. So let's call this just the endpoints and now I can iterate through my endpoints and call the respective method to map this concrete endpoint. I'm going to pass in the web application instance, which also implements the endpoint route builder interface. So everything is falling into place. And now I can just return this to complete my implementation. Now, if I go back to my program file, let's go back here where we were registering our endpoints and I can say app map endpoints. The problem is this only partially works. Yes, I'm registering the endpoints and they will work when we start the application, but I forgot that I'm also configuring API versioning for my endpoints and specifying a route prefix using a route group builder. So let's refactor the map endpoints method to also take this into consideration. And let's, for example, specify the route group builder as an optional argument. What I'm going to do now is add a variable that's going to hold the I endpoint route builder. Let's call this the builder. And then the value of this will depend on if the route group builder is null or not. So let's say if the route group builder is null, then I just want to use the web application as my I endpoint route builder. Otherwise, I'm going to use the provided value for the route group builder. I also need to pass this value to the map endpoint method, and I need to update my call site to include the version group here in the call to the map endpoints method. So right now I'm mapping my user endpoints using this map endpoints method, and I'm mapping the workout endpoints through an extension method. So let's start the application and see what is the result that we got. Here's the Swagger user interface, and you can see that all of the user endpoints are correctly mapped using our new approach. And we implemented all of this using just a simple interface and two extension methods, one method to register the implementations of this interface with dependency injection, and then the other method to resolve these implementations and map the individual endpoints. 
If you want to try this out on your own, one mistake I made earlier is specifying the is assignable from method here instead of the is assignable to, which I fixed right now, but I just wanted to highlight this in case you run into an issue. Now, let's go ahead and slightly improve the implementation here. I'm going to add a new type inside of the endpoints folder and I'm going to call it tags. It's going to be a static class and for now, let's just expose one constant it's going to be a string and I'm going to call it users. And then what I'm going to do is go through my individual endpoints and tag them with this tag. So I'm going to say with tags, users, and let me quickly update this for the other user endpoints. So now I'm in the start following endpoint. Let's also tag the register endpoint and let's also tag the get recent followers endpoint. You're going to see why I'm doing this when I start the application and show you the Swagger UI. This is the old Swagger UI from the last time I started the application and you can see that all of my user endpoints are here. And now if I refresh this, you're going to see that my user endpoints are now grouped under the users tag. And this is how you can group your minimal API endpoints on the Swagger user interface. I thought this would be useful, so I wanted to show you how simple it is to achieve this. There are some open source libraries that also implement an approach similar to this, but if you don't want to depend on a NuGet package, this is all it takes to implement simple registration for your minimal API endpoints. An improvement point here would be adding some sort of analyzer that's going to make sure that you're only configuring one endpoint from an implementation of the I endpoint class. And I really like this approach for vertical slice architecture because you can easily group your minimal API endpoint with the use case, for example. If you want to see my discussion on minimal APIs versus controllers, then you should watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe button under this video. And until next time, stay awesome.